Welcome to the Genealogy Happy Hour, a place where new family historians can learn to document their family histories and celebrate their new discoveries. I'm Amy. And I'm Penny. And we're here to help you discover your family tree from the beginning. Welcome to episode 91. Today, we're going to be discussing the use of city directories in our genealogical research. But before we do that, Penny, do we have a wine? We do have a wine, and this wine is a gift. Um, that For me? I received. No. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it was a gift to me. I got six bottles. and um, uh, Somebody really likes it. What's that? Someone really likes you. Yeah. They give you six bottles. Um, and, and they're Hungarian wine. They came from Hungary. So I was, and they were all the same. And I, I thought, okay, I hope I like it because I've got six bottles of it. And it's called the um, Saska Ferment Tokai 2020. And Ferment is the um, white Hungarian grape and Tokai is the region. And I have to say, this wine was delicious. Um, we got through two bottles in two days for sure. And now I'm trying to figure out where I can get more of this oh. amazing wine. Yeah, wow. it's really good. Wow. I'm excited to try it. Yeah. Well, I hope you, you might never try it because I'm not bringing bottle. any back. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> but it is it's very good so if, if you right. can find this Saska Ferment Tokai um, Hungarian wine you should try it because it's delicious all right are we going to put a picture on our website I can at do the that. bottom yeah. okay that'd be great awesome all right the sponsor of today's episode of genealogy happy hour is newspapers.com the largest online newspaper archive Newspapers.com is your ultimate resource for discovering your family's history. Explore more than 800 million newspaper pages in their vast collection spanning three centuries. Newspapers.com is your gateway to exploring the past, with papers from the U.S., U.K., Canada, Australia, and beyond. Trace your family's journey and uncover the extraordinary tales of your ancestors through newspaper stories, birth and marriage announcements, obituaries, photos, and much more. For listeners of today's show, newspapers.com is extending a discount of 20% off on a Publisher Extra subscription. Just use the code HAPPYHOUR at checkout. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity. All right, so city directories, I think, are something that are often underutilized in genealogical research. Uh, I think we sometimes we ask ourselves, well, what could an annual publication listing all the residents and businesses are p- of a particular city, um, how could that be helpful to us? Well, let's talk about how it could be helpful to us, shall we? Yeah, there's a lot of clues in directories. Um, when a woman's name appears as a widow, could mm-hmm. narrow down the year of the husband's death. Mm-hmm. Um, Let's see, your employment, you can track movement, Yep. Um, establish family, and there's always the fan club um, if the directory shows um, not alphabetical listing, but listing by location, then you can see who's living near, um, right in this area. Right, those crisscross directories are very helpful because not only do they usually list everyone um, by surname, alphabetically by surname, but you can also then, if once you find that address, go to the address, look up the address, and see who all the neighbors are because you could find family members living nearby. And then there's all the different kinds of directories, such as. Um, city directories, house mm-hmm. directories, business directories, and trade directories. Mm-hmm. The the cool thing about the city directories are, you know, like you said, um, you know, mostly uh, they're at the very beginning. I mean, city directories have been published since just after the Revolutionary War, with the establishment of the United States. Um, city directories started to be published because this was a way for um, salesmen to find sales leads 
But um, so those first telephone, the first um, city directories really just listed men. But then at the um, in the 20th century, women, uh, unless they were head of, you know, unless the women were the head of the household and, and, or a widow, they might be listed. But then women um, began to be listed with their husbands. Um, so those are that's a good way to, to put a husband and wife together. Uh, but the other thing that's cool about them is that they were published annually, sometimes even biannually. But um, well, we only have censuses every 10 years, but these are published every single year. So you can track your ancestors' movements every year. And that's great, especially if they lived in a large city like New York City, where they were renting and so they were moving around you know every year they probably lived in a, in a different spot and so you can see where your ancestor was moving um and um you know who they were living living with or living around yeah i have a really good example of that exact thing actually um i've got um an ancestor evan john james who was born in 1887 and he is listed in the 1933 directory as a buyer living at 97 Sharp Street, married to Helen. And interestingly enough, um, Ralph Bonowitz is at 95 Sharp Street um, in 1933, two doors down, and will become his son-in-law. There you go. Um, yeah, or, or is it sent a lot at that mm -hmm. time? They're, they're just, they're a few doors away from each other. But tracking him back, um, I couldn't find a directory for every single year, but I could find, going back, um, starting in 1902, there was um, um, a listing for an Evan James as a um, minor and no no j for the middle initial normally he goes by evan j james um, and he would have been 15 then and then in 1903 there's one again for an evan james as a laborer uh, living on blackman street the first one was on curtis street but then in 1904 when he was 17 he's listed as a clerk in a grocery store and same for 1905 and 1912, 13, 14, 16, and 17. He's all listed as a clerk in a grocery store. And when he was listed as a buyer, um, that was for a grocery store. And on his death certificate, it said he was an employee at a grocery store. So I'm pretty sure that's my guy. And it lists all the different streets that he lived on. Um, started out on Sharp Street then went to Poplar Street, John Street, and back to Sharp. And the fun thing about that is I could plot that on Google Earth um, maps. And, you know, they're only a few blocks from each other. So this mm -hmm. guy moved a few times over the years, mm -hmm. you know, with some short years there. We're talking like 1904 to 1918. Moved that many times into different, different homes. But it was, it was just really interesting to be able to um, see that and then see that the Bonowitz family was just a couple doors down in the right. end of the later right. years. Right, yeah. right. And so that's, mm -hmm. inf that's information that we don't see between those two, those, between the census. So between, you know, 1900 and 1920, he moved around numerous times and you only have one census in those 20 years to be able to capture that. Correct. But the census is good um, to check for verification. Because uh, it does, that's where, you know, it definitely do, does list in all those years that he was a clerk in a grocery right, store. Right, right. You know, that's exactly just right. a more confirmation on mm -hmm. that. And actually, early when I said he was a miner and a laborer in the 1900 census, he's listed as a slate polisher. Mm, okay. So he probably was, his father was also um, a miner. So he probably started out in the mines and then somehow got a lucky break to get a job at the grocery store and did not have to work in the mines his Mid whole life. He, he, so he, yeah, he, he improved his, hopefully his, um, his employment there. He started working in the city or the town or yeah, whatever yeah. it was. So that's, that's, that's a part, that's a great example. Um, so, you know, and the other thing you, you're also seeing here, unlike at the census, you're seeing everybody with that same surname 
that's in, living in that same location. So you can very quickly go down and look at everyone who's obviously, um, you know, a male, most likely, and over the age of, of 18 or 21. And they're listed there alphabetically. So you can see, you know, have I missed anybody in my family? Or is there anyone here um, who um, I don't know, I don't recognize? Are they part of my family? And then you can also start seeing those trends. Um, who drops off? You know, did they move away or did they die? There's an indicator there. If um, your ancestor is listed, uh, you know, by himself and the next year he's listed with a wife, then you know that there's a time, you know, a good year right there that they probably got married and you can start looking for the marriage record. So, you know, like Penny was doing, you know, you were, you were tracking the changes in his employment as well as tracking, you know, where he was moving, moving to, uh, moving around the city and, he was living close to his in-laws, right? Or his son-in-law. His son-in-law. son-in-law. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, um, those all of those are extremely helpful. The other thing that you can use the city directories for are a listing of all of the religious um, organizations of, like, for instance, the same denomination. If you know that your um, ancestors were, say, Methodist or Catholic, you can look at all of the churches in that location um, that have that for that same denomination. If there's multiple churches, again, we're talking about city directory. So usually you're using these in a um, a larger city, but then you can start plotting how many of those churches, let's say, or synagogue, you know, where they would maybe have worshipped, and maybe where you can find some additional um, information from the religious organization organizations in that same community yeah i i love these city directories not just for that information but just to see what life was like at that time um all the because a lot of them will have some ads from Mm -hmm. the businesses that are listed in there we'll put an ad in and i think it's just fascinating like this is this is when your ancestor lived and this is what was happening in that town at that time that right. particular mm-hmm. year sure. it's like you said they're published every year um for the most part and in addition to that you're right they're all they sometimes they'll put like little community histories at the very beginning you know um, that will also kind of give you a feel for what's going on in that community there could have um the elected officials listed in there as well so your ancestor if they held an elected position might be listed in there um or um you know um even the um spit it out amy i don't know what i'm gonna say i don't know what i'm gonna say i don't know what i'm gonna say oh i know it's so much it is no there's um, there's just a lot yeah start well if your if your ancestors, you can see like there was an example that I, that um, I have where um, the spouse was working, so the woman that the wife was working for a few years, and so not only is she listed with her husband, but she's also listed independently, and it says who she worked for, who you know what her occupation was, or where she was working for. So with all of the um, the alphabetized surnames, you're going to see. I saw her twice. She was listed once by herself, and then once again with her husband. Been in, you know in parentheses with her husband, um, but that gives me an indication that oh you know either you know the income is tight or you know she's out there in the workforce as, as well as as he is. So um, the other uh, another thing is if you go through the businesses, they will often list who the ownership is on that business. So um, the name of the company plus the owner or the manager of the business too. That's a good point, because you could see how that person might show up on other documents, too, um, in that fan club. Exactly right. Yes. If you see that your, uh, you know, your ancestor is working for the grocery store, you know, what grocery store was he working for? Does that owner of the grocery store or, you know, does who are the witnesses on a marriage or a, on a will? All of those people could um, those names could, could show up again in your in your documentation or in your research. Yeah, which is fascinating. So the good news is that a lot of these are digitized and can be found on, um, well, they can be found on, say, Ancestry or MyHeritage. 
uh, family Sir, the Family History Library has a collection as well, and you can find um, their um, collection on FamilySearch.org in their catalog. Um, but a lot of them are also on uh, Google Books. Google Books is, is a great resource for a lot of um, you know free um, digitized materials. So there's also an online historical directories uh, website that has links to various online directories as well. Nice. So that's a good resource. But yeah, um, very helpful. And then always check the local libraries, the um, your county, your city, your university libraries, and your genealogical societies. They often, uh, well, most of the libraries will, will have a collection of city directories for their local, for that local yeah. community in the very Histori- least. Local historical societies too would have Correct. something probably. Yes. Um, so check with them. Sometimes the libraries might even have them digitized on um, our link through their website. Um, and of course, World Cat is always our friend when we're trying to locate um, public, public, published materials, and that will help you guide you to where the nearest copy is. Um, I think you know hard copy in in a uh, repository. So, um, two of the larger publishers um, going back over the years were R. L. Polk and Company and Williams. So you'll see those um, Polk directories. I think it's very well known as being one of the larger publishers throughout the United States for those. And I even saw that um, city directories were published um, as far back um, in the UK um, into, um, you know, 1600s, so 1700s. So I know. I have not seen those. I have not seen those, but I I read that somewhere. So I don't know where where I read it or I would cite it, but I'm not going to. (laughs) I'm not going to. You read it somewhere and we should follow through and see if it's true. (laughs) Yeah. Fascinating. Fascinating. Um, Well, on a different subject, Mm -hmm. other than city directories, I have been. watching as i'm sure some of you've been watching the um the show the gilded age on was it on max i guess um by julian fellows who did downton abbey Mm -hmm. and you know love all that stuff but i i just find that life fascinating and you know of course i have to listen to the podcast uh the official gilded age podcast after every episode just to get some get some backstory and then as i'm listening to that podcast i find that the gentleman um who is one of the hosts for that podcast, he has his own podcast called The Bowery Boys. They have, I I think it's over 400 episodes on there, but it's all about the history of New York, New York City and surrounding boroughs and whatnot. Mostly, I I shouldn't say mostly during that time, but lots of different things um, during that time period. And so fascinating, so fascinating, very well done, very well um, thought out and produced. It's it's a great podcast. And if you have any interest in the history of New York or that time period, or mm-hmm. you know those um, very wealthy um, magnets back then, that's a, that's a great podcast to listen to. It's called the Bowery Boys. Great, but it it made me wonder, and I haven't researched this yet. If there's other podcasts out there that you know are specific to a place that your ancestors lived you know like is there one specifically to the coal mining towns of west virginia that would give me some backstories to what was happening um so i'm gonna have to look for that because as y'all know there's podcasts for everything you could possibly want (laughs) out there (laughs) so you never know but i highly recommend the bowery boys it's very good great awesome all right, well, uh, get um, those city directories out and start tracking your ancestors, tra- start tracking them um, year by year, not just every 10 years with the census, but use both and see uh, see if you can fill in a little bit of what's going on in your ancestors' life in between those census records. So you'll be- Until next we time. We might be surprised. So until next time, cheers. Cheers. Thank you for listening. Please email us with any questions or comments at genealogyhappyhour at gmail.com. Visit our website, www.genealogyhappyhour.com, for additional resources, books, and wines. Don't forget to drink responsibly. And never drink around genealogical documents.